Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina. Hi, welcome to Christ the King Church. I'm Melinda, Pastor Morris starter. I want to welcome you to the service today, but I want to take a moment and tell you about some of our services here at Christ the King through the week. From on Sunday morning, from 10 to 10.30, we have Sunday school. At 10.45, we have communion, which is open to all baptized believers. At 11 o'clock, we start our worship service. At the end of our worship service, we have a time of ministry where our elders will anoint you with oil and pray over you for healing or whatever your need may be. On Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, we have our regular midweek service. On Thursday, this is our little special meeting that I want to take a moment and explain to you about. It's called our healing room evening. It's from 6.30 to 8, and it's a time of teaching and ministry time. The teaching is from 6.30 to 7.30 because we believe that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. At 7.30 to 8, it's the ministry portion of it in which we have a group of people that will pray over you for whatever your need may be, be it physically, financially, emotionally, mentally, whatever you desire prayer for, they will come in agreement with you about. Also, if you do not have a specific need that you want prayer over, feel free to come and join us anyway from 6.30 to 7.30 during the teaching time. At this time, again, I would like to welcome you, and we will join the ministry now. I want to welcome you to Christ the King Church. I'm Pastor Sam Parsons. I'm one of the associates here. This is our School of the Bible. We're going to be studying today about the blood of Jesus, its protection, and I'm going to bring out some other things that the blood of Jesus does for us as well. We're going to be starting off in Exodus in chapter 12. Before we get into the Word, let's take a moment and let's pray. Father, I just ask you today, we share the Word of God, that you would open people's eyes and ears, their spiritual eyes and ears, that they can see and hear, Lord, what you have for them out of this Word. Father, I pray that you would help me to convey the word that you've given me to them. And I pray, Lord, that they'd be able to receive it. Lord, bless our time together. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking today about primarily how the blood of Jesus protects us. But as I said, we're going to be covering some other things as well. But we're going to start off looking in Exodus 12. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the Passover what all took place there. We're going to be jumping around on some scriptures here in, in 12, in chapter 12, but we still be there for a little while. So Exodus 12, let's look at verse 3. It says, Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Now skip down to verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Now let's jump over to verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. And the blood shall be for you for a token upon the houses where ye are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now down to verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. The Passover is somewhat representative of what, where we are today because of the blood of Jesus. When God looks at us, 
He sees us through the blood of Jesus. What Jesus did for us was He restored our broken relationship with God. He took care of all of our sins. So He bridged the gap between man and God and allowed us to have fellowship with Him again. It was because of His, because of his blood. The Word of God tells us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. So it's very important to understand that this is one of the first times here that God saved His people through the blood. You know, if they'd not been obedient and they would have not taken that lamb and killed it and taken the blood of that lamb and put it upon the doorpost and the lentils, they would have suffered the same fate as the Egyptians. That blood was a sign to the angel of God that came through that those people were not to be touched. They were covered by the blood of Jesus. We are also covered today under the blood of Jesus, just as they were covered with the blood of this lamb that was slain, representative of the blood of Jesus. And just think about the fact that if the blood of a lamb could protect them from these plagues that God was sending and this particular one of the death of the firstborn, that would protect, if the blood of a lamb would protect them, that how much more the blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, will protect us. There's a particular verse I want you to take a, a quick look at. The latter portion of verse 22 says this, None of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. It's important for us to stay under the covering of the blood of Jesus, just as it was for these people to stay in the door under the covering of the blood of that lamb. Most people who get away from God get upset about something, someone, something that was said or done to them at church and they leave. Now, if they are going to another church, if God really told them to leave and go to another church, that's fine. But the problem is, is that when they leave, if they don't get back in a church, then they're out from underneath the covering that God has provided for them. God has given us the local church to be a covering for us, to help us and to provide for us. And God wants us in a local church. The Word tells us that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves, as is the manner of some, but He says, even the more so as you see the day approaching. So when I look at that, it means that we should be getting together with the other people of God and worshiping and feeding off of each other to help ourselves grow and to keep us covered by God's covering. So we see here that the blood of this lamb provided protection for the children of Israel and the blood of the lamb, Jesus, provides protection for us. If you would now, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We're going to be looking at verses 8 and 9. Romans 5, 8 and 9. It says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. You see, not only could we say that the blood of Jesus provides protection, but here it tells us we've been justified by His blood. And by it, we're saved from wrath through Him. There's coming a time, 
and no one really knows exactly when it is, we can say, I somewhat believe that we're getting closer and closer every day to the coming of the Lord. He may very well come in my lifetime. It may be after that. But regardless of when he does come, there's going to be a time when the wrath of God is going to be poured out on this earth. You can read all about it in the book of Revelation. But this tells us that we're going to be saved from that wrath because of what Christ has done for us. I don't know whether the doctrine of the tribulation is true or not. I hope it is. But the one thing I know is this. God will not pour His wrath out on His children. It says here, we're going to be saved from wrath through Him. So whether we leave this earth before tribulation, in the middle of tribulation, after the tribulation, it really doesn't matter because we're going to be protected and kept from the wrath of God that He's going to pour out. So you can see here, not only are we protected by the blood of Jesus, but it says that we're justified and we're, we're protected from the wrath of God through Him. Turn with me now to Ephesians. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to look at verse 13. Well, let's back up to Ephesians 1 first and look at verse 7, then we'll go to chapter 2. This kind of confirms what I just said a moment ago, but it says, verse 7, chapter 1 of Ephesians says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. So you see here, we start listing them. We have protection through the blood of Jesus. We're justified through the blood of Jesus. We're protected from the wrath of God because of the blood of Jesus. And here we're told we have redemption through the blood of Jesus, which includes the forgiveness of our sins, and it's according to the riches of His grace. There's many benefits to the blood of Jesus. Now, I'm just going to say this. There's many churches today that will not discuss the blood of Jesus. There's whole denominations who have taken every hymn out of their hymnals that even mentions the blood of Jesus. Why are they doing that? Well, the devil hates us talking about the blood of Jesus because that's where he was defeated. The blood of Jesus is one of the most powerful tools that the Christian has. Jesus provided so much for us through His blood. The enemy hates that. And so he's moved in some churches, had them take out any reference to the blood, well, some people don't like to talk about the blood. Well, if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, we would still be under condemnation. There would have been no salvation for us. There would have been no forgiveness of our sins. So it's important for us to understand we can't minimize the blood of Jesus and what He did for us. Now let's go to Ephesians 2. Let's look at verse 13. Here's another really good benefit that has come about by the blood. Ephesians 2.13 says this, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, one of the things that Jesus did for us was He restored our fellowship with God. God always wanted to fellowship with His children. If you remember back in Genesis when he created Adam and Eve. God used to come and walk with them and talk with them face to face. Then they sinned and broke that relationship with God. 
Jesus had to come to restore that relationship. And as I said, he bridged the gap that was there between us and God, restored our fellowship, and we were far away from God in our sins. But now we've been brought close to God by the blood of Jesus Christ. So you see, that's another important benefit. I want to go now to the book of Colossians. Go to Colossians, and I want to look at chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 14 through 20. This one just kind of confirms what we said earlier, but verse 14 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This just confirms we're redeemed by the blood of Jesus and our sins are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. Now if we look at verse 15, it's talking about Jesus Christ. He says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And look at verse 20. It says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So if we just go back and look, we have protection. We have justification. We're saved from the wrath of God. We have redemption. We have our sins forgiven. We have been given peace because of His blood. And here we're, we're told that we have peace through the blood of His cross. And we're reconciled unto Him. These are all benefits that we could never have if Jesus had never come and shed his blood. The blood makes all the difference in the world. Now, if you would, go with me now to 1 Peter. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. And we're going to look at verses 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. It has to be repeated because too often you'll hear, you'll be in churches, you'll hear preachers, and they almost try to convince you that you can gain your salvation through doing good works by trying to do things to please God. But we're told right here in 1 Peter, verse 18, we're not redeemed with corruptible things. Silver and gold won't redeem us. All of the acts or works that we can do could not redeem us. If they could have, then Jesus would have never had to come to earth. He would have never had to take on flesh and become a man as we are he would have never had to die on the cross. He would have never had to shed his blood. 
This is so important for us. God loved us so much. The Word tells us that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. How was that made possible? By the fact that Jesus was obedient unto death on the cross he shed his blood. He took his blood into the holy place in heaven and sprinkled his own blood on the mercy seat once and for all. That never has to be repeated again. He did it once and for all. I want to take a quick look. Let's go back to Hebrews. I want to look at Hebrews. And we're going to walk a little bit through chapter 9. Point out a few things. I think it's important for us to understand what the situation was before Jesus came and what things have changed. Hebrews 9, beginning with verse 1, says this. Then verily the first covenant which talking about the Old Testament, had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself for the errors of the people. Now just stop and think a minute. The priest had to purify himself and the first thing he had to do was go in and offer blood for his sins and then he would offer blood for the sins of the people. If you study this, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies. He had bells all the way around the bottom of his robe. He had a rope tied to his ankle. The people knew that as long as they heard the bells, that the priest, the high priest, was still alive and that he had purified himself to the point that he could go into the Holy of Holies. But if they heard nothing, if the bells suddenly stopped, then they knew that something had happened to the high priest. They were not allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. They would drag him out with the rope that was tied around his ankle. So we see not everybody could go into the Holy of Holies back during the time of the Old Covenant. Only the high priest, and only then after he had prepared himself, gone through a, a number of rituals that were required to purify himself, and then when he would go in, the first thing he would do would be to offer blood for himself. Then he was able to offer blood for the people. Let's pick back up in verse 8. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Which was a figure for the time then present, 
in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Now if we stop there, the other thing we can see is these sacrifices did not take away sins. They covered sins. That was it. That's what he's talking about. It couldn't make your conscience clean. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit can wash your conscience and make you clean. But the Old Testament sacrifices could never change you on the inside. All they could do would be to cover you, cover your sins, and they had to be repeated every year because people continued to sin. And they were never could have those sins really taken away. Now, verse 10 is an interesting verse because it talks about what was required of the people in those days. It's talking about the Old Testament. It says, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers' washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. You see, the people in the Old Testament lived with a lot of rules. Certain things they could eat, certain things they couldn't. Certain things they could drink, certain things they couldn't. They had to wash themselves, they had to wash their hands certain ways. They had to go through all these uh, rituals and all these ordinances and things they had to do in order to have peace with God. We're where we are today and we're where we're going to be in the future because of the blood of Jesus. His blood is what brought forgiveness of our sins, restoration of fellowship with God. His blood is what brought all that to pass. And I'm very grateful for the sacrifice he made and the fact that he shed his blood for me, for all of you. May the Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us. My prayer for you this week is that you have made Jesus Lord of your life. If not, I pray that you would have a personal visitation from him this week in which you do accept him as Lord of your life. Thank you, and we will see you next week. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church. Follow us on Facebook, and you can also see our sermons published on YouTube.